Welcome to this video, round 7, coverage of the World Championship match between defending champion Vichy Arnold and the challenger Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, and we had um, two decisive games, game 5 and game 6, both won by Carlsen, so he's leading 4-2. And uh, Vichy is in, in really big trouble now, he needs a win. And um, this white game is certainly one of the tries that he should... Um, yeah, one of the chances that he still has. Let's see um, what he was capable of doing today. We uh, had one e4 and uh, e5. Oh, I see I have, I have those little TikTok noises, a little bit too irritated. They are too silent for me. Okay, we had one e4, one e5. And um, again, a Berlin. To be honest, I was slightly surprised that we got this again because um, yeah, it just feels like the Berlin and the resulting positions, the end game or those um, D3 lines um, simply seem to um, suit Carlsen very well. This kind of slow battle without many um, complications or or tactics. Um, I'm, I'm surprised. I thought that Anand would uh, try something else. I, I was expecting d4 actually, but all my guesses in this match uh, were, were rubbish anyway. So <laughs> don't. Um, I'm, I'm not, not too disappointed that I was wrong again. Okay, he played d3 actually. Again, not trying the end game. Bishop c5, just like in the previous game. And um, now Bishop takes c6. This um, line has been played numerous times by by many top players, also by Arnand. Carlsen has played it also, so it's a, it's a popular line. After d takes, and uh, here Arnand plays knight bd2. Here there are also other moves like h3, for example, preventing the bishop development to g4. But knight bd2 is the, the recently most popular move, also played by Arnold more than once. Um, yeah, what is White's idea in this position? The idea is to, um, to play a long game and uh, keep pieces on the board. You have exchanged on c6, but what you try to do is in the long run play for f4. Very, very long run. It takes uh, a long, long time to get it prepared or trade um, minor pieces in a way that at the end you get this typical endgame edge of the exchange uh, Rui. It's, um, it's a bit difficult to, to get to that though. Um, the, the typical structure arises if those pawns are exchanged and then white has got four against three on the, on the king side. Um, it's a maneuvering game and therefore I'm a bit surprised that uh, Arnand went for that. I thought um, he would try something more more drastic. There were people in the, or the commentators even, uh, who expected uh, something like the King's Gambit. <laughs> well, I didn't, uh, didn't uh, think about that one. Uh, I'm also pretty sure that uh, Carlsen has something prepared against that. But um, I thought maybe the scotch or or d4 some some other opening okay we got bishop g4 this is a rare move only played once or twice before but um, quite natural pinning the knight h3 and um, bishop to h5 and um, now again i i was surprised at least a bit Anand played knight f1 it's it's a normal move the idea is to go knight g3 and um, harass this bishop. However, he also could have played a g4. I thought this would would be a bit more um, a bit more ambitious. Maybe um, it's not really helping. But um, yeah, it feels uh, when you are two points down, you you should try something more enterprising. Maybe it's not um, it's not really great. But um, but anyway, gain some space and try to make this uh, bishop look offside. Black can play knight d7, f6 and so on, get it back into play. 
maybe it's just not that uh, great for white but um, okay knight f1 knight d7 very normal black black's knight on f6 is misplaced what he like to do and ideally to no i'm drawing this arrows wrong he wants the knight on e6 or possibly on c6 and some after playing this one and the knight should somehow connect to the d4 square on f6 it's doing nothing and this also prepares if possible f6 however after knight g3 magnus simply took on f3 the simple solution and now play g6 yeah this just takes those important squares and um, okay at first you think okay maybe bishop h6 looks looks like it's uh, a bit annoying preventing short castles but black is not intending to do that anyway you can play queen e7 and then castle long no problem in the game anand actually played bishop e3 and uh, yeah another piece trade okay carlson is not exchanging right away queen e7 is logical over protecting c5 and preparing long castle you need to do that and now both sides castle long so we don't have any um, opposite side castling or stuff like that simply um, symmetrical positions of the king and now knight e2 was played yeah this certainly makes some sense the knight on g3 only looked at squares that it uh, yeah will never ever go to and um, f4 is basically the only plan that uh, white has still left um, in this position rook e8 centralizing all very sensible king b1 and b6 yeah b6 to prepare the king to b7 and uh, we got just that and h5 yeah to be honest uh, i don't have uh, any great ideas in this position it's simply completely equal um, white has a hard time to make any sort of progress you could think about um, instead of pushing the h pawn you can always think about d4 but um, the problem is that simply e4 is hanging in this position let's say you take and then you lose this important pawn and probably the game and the match <laughs> Um, d4 is uh, not working and you, you can try to prepare f4 but at the end uh, it will only exchange um, yeah pawns there's simply not much play in this position Anand played h5 as mentioned and now after the trade Carlsen prepared this rerouting of the knight and um, okay after the trade g3 we see that after all he's going to play a form but by now um, there's so many uh, pieces exchanged uh, now even the rooks come off the h file is open I, I didn't really get any of this to be honest why would you play play h5 and exchange on the h farm the only explanation that i really have is that he after losing two games um, wanted to play very very solidly to not lose the third one and really yeah, that's the match. Yeah? Uh, I think already two games uh, is the match uh, being two games down, but three games is definitely over. And um, he was probably hoping for for a slight uh, slight press in this um, in this opening, but there's simply just everything's exchanged. Rook h8. Yeah, there's there's simply nothing to to explain here. To be honest, they just trade stuff. And um, yeah, here the only thing to avoid is to blunder this pawn as the queen now here is hanging. This would uh, give the game away. And after queen f3, he played f5, not this, <laughs> attacking e4. So we have another trade and uh, the draw actually was agreed here. We have a repetition basically and uh, a draw a relatively quick draw 30 uh, moves 32 32 moves but um, this was all played uh, relatively quickly we see that both uh, players had one hour left on the clock 
and uh, to be honest um, you don't need to be Carlson to um, to um, to draw this game on the black side I mean uh, on a good day um, well um, lots of people could manage that because white simply did nothing um, I'm a bit puzzled to be honest I'm not quite sure what uh, what the intention was but um, it's always um, or sometimes not always but sometimes tricky to to understand any sort of match strategy I cannot really believe he has given up on the match completely you simply um, cannot play in front of your own people he's playing in his hometown you cannot um, simply draw the rest of the games and say okay okay minus two is fine whatever I knew I was uh, going to have a hard time in this match he will not do that he needs to try something maybe he's um, got some some other ideas for for the next black game I don't know or um, there's some some other some other reason that uh, we are not aware of but this is a strange game for a player who's two points down if you would give someone this game and uh, and ask uh, okay uh, let tell me in this in this position in this game what is the match match situation like then uh, you probably would guess okay this is probably a game at the end of the match where it is already decided and uh, they're just uh, going through the motions basically but um, yeah it's uh, it's it's strange I didn't really um, understand what what's going on um, and I don't really understand why he's going for for the Berlin again for as white I mean uh, Kasparov already experienced uh, that it is very really tough against this opening in fact someone uh, posted on uh, on a board that uh, 1e4 in world championship matches um, has scored so miserably <laughs> that uh, it's really uh, it's really looking strange especially against 1e5 1e4 one has uh, the last win in 1995 <laughs> Kasparov against Arnand the famous uh, game 10 in the in the open Rui okay so let's wrap up this um, this rather a boring game and hope that uh, we get something more interesting to uh, tomorrow when um, Carlsen has white um, you can certainly not blame Carlsen here he's uh, very much content uh, with the draw as black he can try a little bit as white but uh, you're two points he's two points up and uh, there's no reason to to do anything fancy especially if you if you see that uh, your opponent is um, is playing like that all right thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it anyway and um, i'll be back tomorrow with uh, the next game hopefully more interesting thanks for watching